What's up everyone? If you're new here, my name is Michael. In this video, I'm gonna read a bunch of negative Google reviews on Glassdoor and Blind, and then give my personal take on it since I've been working at Google for about eight months now. Google is obviously a really highly sought after place to work, and a large majority of their reviews are extremely positive. So let's see what a few bad reviews say. So starting off with Glassdoor, Google has a 4.5 rating out of five, so really highly rated. And I'm sorting by lowest rating. And then for job type, I'm putting software engineering. And there does seem to be a lot of troll posts such as this one, where it says the cons are bad salary at the location, Larry Page doesn't respond to calls. Or this one where it says the pros, very large desk, the cons, desk was too large. And then there are reviews that sound great, but are rated poorly, so likely more troll posts. So we're just gonna ignore all of those. Too big and bureaucratic. Google Cloud is a terrible org. Too much red tape and political BS. Perf and promo suck to the point people give up and coast. Promotions take an act of God here. With needless committees and process overhead, just another big company where you are just a headcount. So I'm not in Google Cloud, I'm actually in Core, so I can't really speak to working in cloud. But regarding Perf and Promo, Google just started this new review process called GRAD, which stands for Googler Reviews and Development. And so in GRAD, you essentially create a bunch of expectations for yourself and then you have multiple check-ins with your manager and you get feedback from your peers that you work with. And then depending on how much you complete at the end of the grad cycle, that determines your rating. And this is all public information. It's listed on Google directly, so I'm not you know, sharing something secret or anything. I actually just finished my first cycle recently at the end of 2022 but I won't know what my rating is until early March. And I will say that going through this first grad cycle can be very stressful. At the beginning of each cycle, you come up with several different expectations with your manager. So it could be, you know, being code complete for a specific feature, resolving a major bug, whatever it is related to your team or organization. And then at the end of the cycle, you and your manager just check off the expectations that you completed and then that determines your rating. The higher the rating you get, the better your bonus, pay increase, and stock refreshers will be. So essentially, better job performance just equals better pay. It looks like this review was in January of 2022, but Grad actually didn't go into effect until March of 2022, which is actually when I started. So I guess we'll see if this new process is better than what was there before. Bad programmers, pros, food. I think I have gained about 15 pounds since I've been here. So food is something I cannot relate to because I'm fully remote. So I actually don't get any free meals, sadly. The team I'm on is based in San Francisco. Every now and then I do get to travel up there and binge, but I actually don't get to eat free meals every day. Cons, people here don't know how to program. Advice to management, purge the ranks, get people who actually get stuff done, not be whimsical all day working on projects that don't matter to the bottom line. I don't know, this seems a bit dramatic. When people talk in absolutes, it always makes me laugh. Everyone at Google can't program. I'm sure there are, you know, people that slip through the cracks because, you know, the interview process is not perfect, but I don't know, they sound salty about something. My short time at Google was very disappointing. The work I was assigned to is very mundane and I realized I wasn't going to learn what I wanted there. The reputation that it has an innovative technical leader was not at all my experience there as the engineering practices on my team weren't great. I learned a lot more at my previous companies. So having mundane tasks was actually something that I worried about as well before joining Google, but that hasn't been my experience so far. The reason why I, I was worried about it was because, you know, I worked at a, a startup and then a mid-sized company and I felt like I never really had super mundane tasks, but I don't know, maybe going to like a big tech company that that would exist. But fortunately, that hasn't been my experience. I imagine having boring work or, you know, following bad engineering practices is very team dependent. Google is not the company we all loved anymore. It lost its values. Being programmer means being creative. Well, not at Google. You will have artificially created restraints in almost every aspect of your work. Here's an example. Readability. In order to being able to commit some code at Google, you would need to have a readability in a language you're writing this piece of code. It doesn't matter if you have 10 years of experience in that language. It doesn't matter if you have a certificate from the company that developed this language. And in order to get readability, 
you would need to write a lot of code in that language, catch 22. Also, you would have to wait for a pretty long time in the readability queue in order to just start the process. So although this review was back in 2016, I definitely know what this person means about achieving readability for programming languages. So Google does this thing where in order for you to be a subject matter expert in a language used at Google, you have to go through readability approval. So for example, I'm currently going through Java readability where I submit code to a group of people that already have Java readability and they and then they, you know, critique my code and give me a rating. So they'll give me a rating on every single a uh, piece of code that I submit to them. And once I get enough good ratings in a variety of different categories, then I'm granted Java readability. So I've been submitting code for Java readability for six months, and I've only been at Google for eight months, and I still have not gotten Java readability, even though I have prior experience with the language. It can definitely be annoying because it makes the submission of your code take longer to get to production because it requires more reviewers. And so readability actually isn't just for Java, it's for any language. It can be for Go, Python, JavaScript, even API readability, they grant that. So yeah, it can definitely be annoying. I know what this person is talking about. The fact that readability doesn't take into account your background is probably the one of the most frustrating things. Great pay, but it's become an unethical ads monopoly. Ads business model and growth has led to unethical and destructive monopolistic practices. Google is most definitely a behemoth in the ad space. In fact, according to this article, total worldwide revenue for Google in Q3 of 2022 came in at 69.1 billion. And of that, 54.5 billion was from Google advertising. Expect to work like a donkey or be kicked out. Long working hours, no work-life balance. If you work only for 40 hours, you won't get promoted and you'll be sacked. So this review was back in 2013. There aren't a whole lot of very negative Google reviews. So I had to go kind of far back. Maybe things were different back then, but at least from my experience, the work-life balance is pretty normal from any other company that I've worked at. I work 40 hours a week on average, but I imagine this is probably org and team dependent. Now let's jump over to Blind. So Blind has a slightly lower overall rating than Glassdoor at 4.3 stars out of five. And you'll notice that the people on Blind are a lot more critical. Manager is your God, no career growth. So I really don't agree with this. I think Google gives you an amazing career growth just based on the name value. Maybe this person means career growth like when you're in the company, but I feel like having Google on your resume, it really opens the door for a lot of other opportunities. And I can only speak from my personal experience, but after starting at Google, I've gotten more in-mail requests on LinkedIn than I ever have before. Your skills become outdated once you're out of Google. So this con, I definitely partially agree with. Everything at Google is internal. All of the tools you use, the way you write code, deploy code, even the IDE that you use is internal to Google. So it's not really far-fetched to think that if you leave Google, a lot of the things you learned aren't going to be relevant at another job. However, there are things that I think are very relevant and that is, you know, planning work, design skills, you know, are very transferable, you know, learning how to support users at a massive scale. These are all things that I don't believe will become outdated, but I definitely understand, you know, all of the tools that you use internally, you're not going to be able to use them when you leave Google. We are falling behind. Slow doesn't pay well compared to competitors, perhaps a good stepping stone in your career. So it's honestly very surprising to see pay as a con at Google. I always thought that it was, you know, one of the highest paying tech companies. If we actually look at levels.fyi and compare some of the big tech giants like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and let's just look at mid-level engineering salaries in comparison to Google. So. Facebook E4 making 235 total comp. At Apple, they're making 218. At Amazon, 243. At Microsoft, it is 190. And then at Google, it's 242. So actually, from all of these companies, Google is second 
to Amazon and it's only by a thousand dollar difference in total comp. So overall, it seems like the actual pay difference between Google and a lot of these other big tech companies really aren't that much different. Super slow promotion and it's unfair. Super slow promotion, you work hard, but you still can't get promo. Man, there are so many negative reviews saying that promotions are difficult. Seeing how many people have commented about this on, you know, it has me worried a little bit, honestly, not gonna lie. No projects to work on. Management is a failure. I got no projects to work on a few times. That's pretty wild to hear not having anything to work on. I haven't had this experience in the slightest. From the moment I started on my team, I have been on typically more than one project at a time. And that doesn't even include the random little bugs here and there that I'm assigned. I can definitely see how that's frustrating though, not having anything to work on. A place with no soul. Worst place I've worked at, very bad perks and benefits, extremely bureaucratic process on everything, both technical and otherwise, terrible support for any development and growth, learned absolutely nothing from over a year of being there and completely lost interest in engineering. Damn, this person did not have a good time. I mean, Regarding the perks and benefits, I mean, I, I feel like they're good. You know, they cover, you know, medical, dental, all the standard. But one thing I was very, very surprised about was that they actually don't cover like medical 100%. That's something I was really surprised about because at my previous two companies, they did and they were a startup, a mid-sized company. So I thought that going to Google, like the biggest tech company, that they would cover 100%, you know, of your medical coverage. But... Uh, yeah, they don't. It's not a lot that I have to pay every month, but you know, it's like a hundred bucks or something like that. So terrible support for any development and growth. Yeah, once again, I, I feel like this might just be team dependent because I haven't had this experience, at least on my team, but I'm sure there are teams out there where it might, you might feel like stuck. You're not able to, you know, show enough impact with the tasks that you're given. So those were all of the negative Google Sui reviews. I hope it was insightful for you to hear about them and, you know, to hear about my take on, on some of the things that people complained about. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my public Discord channel if you're looking for maybe some study partners. And if you are going through, you know, maybe technical interviews or, you know, you're trying to study more, you can check out my platform, algoswithmichael.com. And with that, I'll catch you guys later.